A little girl is accused of breaking into a house and taking the lives of three people. However, when they sentence her to death and all seemed lost, something surprising happens and leaves everyone speechless. On a cloudy autumn afternoon, a quiet neighborhood in a small town was abruptly disturbed by blaring sirens. Curious and concerned neighbors watched from their windows as the police surrounded the house next door, where an unusual scene had happened. A child, no more than 10 years old, was standing at the front door, her face marked by tears and a dazed expression. The most shocking thing was that her clothes were covered in blood, and that made everyone terrified. The officers advanced quickly and cautiously, their expressions hardened by the uncertainty of what they would find. Police, stand still and put your hands where we can see them. They shouted with their guns raised. When they entered the house, they were met with an oppressive silence, broken only by the muffled sobs of the girl in the doorway, whom they immediately handcuffed. The scene inside the house was one of pure horror. A woman and two small bodies lay inert on the living room floor a bleak picture of ultimate despair. The woman, presumably the mother, was lying in a way that looked like she was protecting her children, who were all covered in blood. One of the policemen, trying to keep his composure in the face of the tragedy, approached the little girl outside, who was shaking uncontrollably. With a calm and soft voice, although his nerves were on edge at the sight of that crime, he asked, What happened here, little girl? She looked at him with big, frightened eyes, unable to formulate any response. The child, clearly out of place and ragged, was a homeless girl and obviously didn't seem to belong there, adding an agonizing mystery to the already macabre scene. What the hell did you come here for? Why did you take those people's lives? But there was no answer. The neighbors, gathered at the scene, muttered among themselves, casting looks of hatred and suspicion in the little girl's direction. She's a wolf in sheep's clothing? How could she kill an entire family? They asked in whispers full of fear and disbelief. The little girl, for her part, remained silent, with the shock and trauma enveloping her like an impenetrable shell. The police, unable to find an answer and faced with the seriousness of the situation, knew they had to act quickly and carefully. The little girl, the criminal who committed the worst act in the world, was also the only witness to a murder that would shock the community. As she was being arrested, the rain began to fall, as if the sky itself were weeping for the tragedy that had occurred in that once lively home. The police began their investigation, aware that this was only the beginning of a case that would unfold in ways no one could have predicted. At the police station, the atmosphere was dense, heavy with the seriousness of what was at stake. The little girl, Lucy, seemed like a shadow of her former self. In front of her, two policemen exchanged looks of frustration and disbelief, their expressions a reflection of the internal conflict between duty and compassion. She was just a little girl, they thought when they looked at her. She had an angelic face, despite being as dirty as if she hadn't bathed in months. Lucy's worn-out clothes and the dirt that stained her disheveled hair told an unspoken story of struggle and survival on the streets. However, when they looked at big bloodstains on her clothes, the officer's hearts filled with hatred. Although she was small and just a child, it didn't change the fact that she was a murderer. You need to tell us what happened so we can help you, little girl, insisted one of the policemen, impatient. Why were you in that house? Why did you kill that mother and her babies? Did you know they were only two years old? Lucy, her eyes fixed on a point beyond the walls of the interrogation room, remained immersed in her silence. Her mind, tormented by fear and confusion, couldn't find the words to explain what had happened and why her clothes were stained with blood. It was as if she was paralyzed, unable to connect with the reality that was unfolding around her. She was already fighting her own battles inside her little heart. Meanwhile, outside the room, news of the tragic event began to spread and the local community was shaken by the possibility that such a heinous crime had taken place in their midst. Neighbors gathered in groups and whispered to each other, casting worried glances in the direction of the police station. I always saw her around these parts, you know? This girl was like a shadow, passing through the streets. I never thought she'd do something like that, said a neighbor, shaken by the discovery. She was always around Rowan's house. I've seen her playing with her children several times, but who would have thought that she would kill them? said another neighbor, her voice filled with surprise and doubt. The forensics team worked around the clock, 
searching every corner of the house for clues that could shed light on what happened. The evidence was beginning to form an alarming narrative, one that placed Lucy, the homeless girl known for wandering the streets, at the center of an unimaginable horror. Neighbors' reports of her constant presence in the victim's home reinforced the theory that she could be, and was, solely responsible for the violent act. Back in the interrogation room, the tension was at its peak. The police, confronted with the girl's obstinate silence, felt the pressure of the case mounting. Why won't you say something, huh? Damn it! One of the policemen broke the silence, his voice echoing through the room with a mixture of pleading and desperation. Lucy, scarred by the tragedy, remained silent and stunned, as if she couldn't believe that those people had died, that it had really happened. With the weight of Juckman on her young shoulders, the interrogation room, a mirror of the larger drama that was unfolding, became the stage for a battle between the search for the truth and the girl's conviction. With no answers, the little girl was taken to an isolated cell, a cold and bleak space that became her world for an endless week. The first night was particularly horrible, marked by the echoing voices of the officers in the corridor, discussing the case with words full of hatred and frustration. She's dangerous, a walking little demon. She heard one of them say, his voice laced with disdain and resentment. I've never seen anything so brutal. That girl is a monster. Alone, Lucy tried to drown out the sounds, cowering in the corner of her cell, her tears flowing incessantly. Fear and despair enveloped her like a cloak, suffocating any hope that might have arisen in her heart. No one showed any empathy for the little girl. It was as if, in everyone's eyes, she was the only one to blame. As the days went by, the girl's anguish only grew, fueled by the isolation and palpable hostility she faced. Not even the prospect of a fair defense was granted to her. Many believed she didn't deserve that right. The case, due to its seriousness and the shock it caused in the community, was rushed to trial. In court, the judge, in front of a room full of the victim's relatives, handed down a sentence that reverberated like thunder. Lucy is sentenced to death, based on the state's strict legislation against triple homicide. The reaction in the courtroom was mixed. Some wept, others murmured in approval, believing that justice had been done. However, when the girl heard her sentence, she began to scream in despair. It wasn't me! Her voice shrieked in terror, which plunged the room into silence. She struggled, trying to free herself from the guard's hands, her small body shaking with sobs and fear. It wasn't me! she cried. For the first time in days, the girl said something, shocking everyone present. It was at this moment of chaos that a lawyer, Lewis, present at the trial, stood up, driven by a sudden conviction for justice. That's wrong, Your Honor, he exclaimed, attracting the attention of the judge and those present. Condemning a child without conclusive proof is an injustice. If she really was the murderer, she would have no remorse. Just look at her. She's terrified. If she was really guilty, she wouldn't be so scared. His passionate plea for justice cut through the silence, making everyone reconsider the situation in a new light. The judge, visibly affected by Lucy's words, decided that she deserved a proper defense. Very well, he said, with a gravity that carried the weight of his position. We'll open a new investigation, and you, little girl, will collaborate. The girl will have the right to a lawyer. Mr. Lewis, if you propose to defend her, so be it. I accept, the lawyer said. At that moment, a spark of hope lit up in Lucy's terrified gaze. For the first time since tragedy struck, someone was willing to fight for her freedom. After being assigned to defend the homeless little girl, Lewis, who was also the father of a girl the same age as her, jumped into the case. Moved by a mixture of compassion and determination, he reviewed every detail, demanding that the crime scene be reevaluated with a critical eye and that new evidence be considered. We have to find out why she was here in this house and consider that it wasn't her who killed those people. Only then can we see if there is another culprit. He said to the investigating officers, hammering out new theories. For the next two weeks, while Lucy was detained at the police station, the man worked tirelessly, facing public scrutiny and media pressure. Every day, the headlines screamed sensationalist theories about the case each one more extravagant than the last. Monster girl shocks the city by getting a new chance, and child murderer, or a victim, were just some of the atrocities that fueled the public frenzy. 
People in the streets stopped Lewis, some expressing support, but many reprimanding him for defending someone they believed was guilty. How can you defend this child? She killed an entire family, exclaimed a passerby, visibly upset as the man walked towards the courthouse. Society was divided. A significant portion condemned the lawyer for helping a criminal, while others believed that no one can be judged without proof. Facing hostility and questions at every turn, the man stood firm, guided by his belief in justice and Lucy's innocence. On the day of the new trial, after weeks of investigation, the courtroom was packed, with an atmosphere full of expectation and tension. Everyone was eagerly waiting to see the evidence that Lewis would present. With the dignity that the situation demanded, he began to uncover the true story behind the tragic incident. Rowan, the victim, knew Lucy. He began, capturing the attention of everyone in the room. She used to offer her food. Lucy is a child who has survived on the street since she was born. One day, Rowan invited her to her house to eat a cake, creating a bond of trust and affection. He went on to detail how Lucy frequented Rowan's house, playing with her two children, a relationship that was sometimes observed by the neighbors as strange. Why would a woman take a homeless kid into her home? These visits explained the girl's presence in the house on the day of the tragedy, dismantling theories that she was a malicious intruder. But the woman started to get ill and stopped going to see the girl in her alley. So when Lucy decided to visit Rowan after more than 10 days without seeing her, she was far from imagining the tragic scenario she would find. The little girl, already worried about her friend's absence, felt a dark feeling as she approached the house that had always been a haven of affection and joy. As she entered the house, the oppressive silence was broken by her own desperate scream. No, no! She saw the woman and her two little two-year-old babies lying on the ground covered in blood. Rushing to Rowan's body, Lucy hugged her, sobbing in despair, not caring about the blood that stained the floor and now her clothes. Rowan's children, her little friends with whom she played incessantly, lay motionless, sealing that family's cruel fate. The little girl, immersed in pain, couldn't process the reality before her eyes. She hugged each of them, crying, with an expression of pure anguish marked on her young face. When she finally left the house, she was paralyzed, her body and soul scarred by the tragedy, her clothes stained with blood like a canvas of painful memories. Lawyer Lewis, in his tireless search for the truth, discovered the real cause of death of that mother and her children. What happened was a carbon monoxide gas leak. The gas, colorless and odorless, had accumulated in the house due to a defect in the heating system. Rowan, already weak, was the first to feel the devastating effects. But that day, when the girl decided to visit her, the pipe burst, causing the woman who was walking with her two children on her lap to fall over a vase. The vessel broke, causing bleeding and bloodshed, but the three of them had already passed away. The investigators who initially examined the crime scene reported malaise and dizziness, symptoms that were initially ignored, but which turned out to be crucial for Lewis. They were able to indicate the presence of the noxious gas, a clue that led to the real cause of the tragedy. In court, when presenting his findings, the lawyer revealed that Lucy, when she found Rowan and the children, had been the victim of a horrible misunderstanding. As she was also very traumatized by the scene, and was not responsible for the dark act that everyone thought she was. The revelation left the courtroom in shock. What was quickly assumed to be a heinous crime turned out to be a fatal accident, a grim reminder of the unseen dangers that can lurk in the confines of a home. The little girl, far from being a murderer, was just a child caught up in tragic circumstances, seeking comfort in the arms of those she considered her only family. After the shocking revelations in court, the judge announced, Considering the evidence presented, it is clear that there was a serious mistake. The charges against Lucy are dropped, and she is free of any blame in this tragic accident. His firm voice echoed through the room. When he declared Lucy innocent, applause erupted in the room, mixed with expressions of relief and joy from everyone who had feared seeing an innocent little girl wrongly convicted. Lawyer Lewis, whose tireless defense had changed the course of the little girl's life, looked at her with a relieved smile. In the midst of the commotion, he came closer and whispered, You're free, my dear. Let's go home. His eyes sparkled with the promise of a better future for her. In the days following the trial, 
Lucy became the center of attention for the media and the community. The publicity, although positive, raised concerns for Lewis, who feared for the girl's safety and well-being in such an exposed environment. Determined to protect her from any exploitation or potential danger, the man and his family officially adopted her, giving her not only a home, but also a sister of the same age, with whom she would grow up and share life. Over time, Lucy's case gained worldwide notoriety, highlighting flaws in the justice system and the importance of diligence in the investigation. The company responsible for the faulty heating system was sued for $2 million, part of which went to the girl as compensation for the suffering and loss she had faced. The judge, touched by the little girl's emotional connection with Rowan and her children, decided that the woman's house would be hers. You were like a daughter to her, so everything that was hers is now yours. He declared, formalizing the transfer of the property to Lucy, ensuring that she would have a place to call her own. So, despite the trauma and pain, the girl found a new beginning with her new family. With the love and support of her new parents and sister, she was able to overcome the shadows of the past and look to the future with hope. The little girl who once faced a terrible fate now lived happily, surrounded by love and care, ready to write new chapters in her life. And if you like this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.